everything is all ratchet. My hair is dirty, my eyebrows are probably oily, um, my lips are for sure chapped. Do they still say ratchet anymore in 2016? Ratchet. Do I? <laughs> my channel thank you so much for tuning in so as you can see by the title of this video we're going to be talking a little bit about the crown area um, so sometime last year I put up a video about how to prevent breakage in the crown area and it got amazing views and with those views I got a ton of questions that I just could not um, answer in the comment section um, and by the way, I'm going to put a, a card up here for that video. So if you haven't seen it, please watch it before you watch this video. It's going to be a talk through because that's going to allow me to um, just focus in on answering the questions rather than like, you know, going off on, on tangents because I can do that. I do that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's get into it. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is whether or not I had to cut all my hair off. And the answer to that is no. Personally, I did not have to cut all my hair off simply because the damage in my crown area was pretty much confined to a relatively small area. I was still able to style my hair and I was able to disguise the damage. And so I didn't find it necessary to cut the whole thing off. I did, however, have to cut um, at least a couple inches. I didn't really measure, but as you can see in this photo, I have at least a couple inches that were completely see-through. They were just basically hanging on by a few strands, and um, I didn't find it necessary to keep all that damage. So I did um, cut several inches of hair off in that area. Now, if you are someone that has extensive damage to the point where you can't style your hair because there's just a huge portion that's broken off, then I would highly, highly suggest that you definitely go ahead and cut the whole thing off and start over. It makes styling easier. And um, also, I think psychologically, it's probably easier to deal with the whole um, issue because you know you're starting fresh. And so it just makes it easier to deal with. On the question of porosity, as you guys have seen in that first video, when I did the porosity test on my crown, my hair sank straight to the bottom. And that told me that my hair was highly porous. So I knew I had to take several steps to counter that issue. And some of the things that I did were, I had to moisturize my hair more frequently, I had to then seal in that moisture properly by using thick oils and pomades. And I also gave myself more protein treatments. Now, obviously, if you're low porosity, then the steps that you would take would be completely different because your issue is that you can't get moisture in your hair in the first place. So some of the things that you can do is you can definitely use a steamer to open up your cuticles and then, you know, before you apply your products. That way, your products will have a better way of, of um, absorbing into the hair. If you don't have a steamer, you can most definitely spritz your hair with warm water. That works, works just as well. Spritz the area with warm water, and that will allow those cuticles to open up and accept your product. Um, another thing that you can do also is you can definitely go ahead and warm up your whatever it is that you're using to moisturize your hair, you can take a portion of it, warm it up, and then apply it to your hair. That will also allow your cuticles to open up to accept the product. Now this question piggybacks on to question number two, because a lot of women that have low porosity hair are also sensitive to proteins. Now if this is you, then you probably don't need the proteins anyway. Your issue really is how to open up those cuticles to get that moisture into your hair. So I would suggest that you just go ahead and follow the steps that were outlined in question number two. On the question of which protein treatments I used, I personally did not use 
a strong protein treatment simply because I've had terrible, terrible experiences with them in the past. They make my hair hard and brittle even after deep conditioning with a moisturizing um, conditioner. They just do not work for me. Personally, I used my Kinky Tresses Avocado Infusion Restorative Conditioner. Now this is not a protein treatment by any stretch of the imagination. It does have um, a small amount of protein in it. It has hydrolyzed silk and hydrolyzed wheat protein. And it is gentle enough that I was able to use it on a weekly basis without any issues. So that's what I used. Um, you don't have to do what I did because everyone's hair is different. You can certainly try um, a stronger protein treatment of your choice. Like I said, everyone's hair is different. That might work for you. It just did not work for me. Um, but whatever you use, make sure it has hydrolyzed protein in it. When the protein is hydrolyzed, it means that it is broken down into small units, small enough that they can penetrate into the hair, which makes the product more beneficial. I would steer clear of those DIY homemade protein treatments because those proteins are way too bulky. Um, they sit on top of the hair and quite frankly, they get washed away the, by the next um, wash day. So they're less beneficial to your hair. I would definitely suggest whatever you do choose to use, go with something that has hydrolyzed protein in it. If you are someone who can tolerate coconut oil, then the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Coconut oil is an amazing, amazing oil. We all know that it penetrates into the hair. But one of the great things about it, and by the way, guys, I did a video, I believe it was my last video, about the benefits of coconut oil. I'm going to put a card above where you can um, click that link if you're interested. But coconut oil actually binds to the proteins in your hair and it helps to reinforce the fibers of your hair. So it makes the hair stronger. Um, it also prevents the hair from overswelling, which prevents um, high growth fatigue, which is when your hair overswells and then contracts and overswells and contracts every time you add water to it. And of course that can cause damage. So coconut oil is definitely helpful in preventing those things from happening. All right guys, so I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that I've answered all your burning questions. If I haven't, please feel free to leave those questions in the comments below and I will do my very, very best to answer them. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next video.